<laughs> Tara Lynn will be speaking from the Advanced Communication Series from the Storytelling Manual. The purpose is to tell a touching story. It's a five to seven minute speech. Tara Lynn is enjoying her Toastmasters journey as she embarks upon her fourth year. Woohoo! All right. <laughs> she looks forward to the challenge of completing her Competent Leader Manual by June. Her speech title is Falling Whistles. Tara Lynn Kasai. <laughs> My name is Sidot. I am but seven years old. I am only a boy. I don't like it here. I don't like what the big soldiers make me do. I want to go home. But I'm afraid that home is far from here. The last time I saw home was many days ago. My sister and I left home to go gather wood so that my mother could prepare the evening meal. We were nearly finished when the big soldiers came. We tried to run, but they were too fast. They were too strong. One of them tripped me, and I fell on my face in the dirt. He put his foot in my back and pressed down and said, don't move or I'll kill you. Another soldier grabbed my sister by her hair and threw her down. She tried to fight back, but he was too big, too strong. He began to hit her in her face until she could barely move. And then, then he began to tear off her clothes. The other soldiers laughed and chanted. I screamed for him to stop, but the foot in my back became harder. I can hardly breathe. The laughing and chanting become farther away. I can hardly see. I thought I was dying. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster members and guests, there is a war raging, a rebel war taking place in the Congo. This war over the past 10 years has claimed the lives of nearly 6 million people. Women and girls are brutally raped. Boys, teenagers on down to little ones, are abducted, forced to fight, forced to kill. The boys who are too young to carry a gun are given whistles. Why whistles? Well, two Americans who were on their way to do a humanitarian mission of a shoe drop found out just that. Why whistles? These two Americans wanted to find out what's going on in the Congo. Is it as bad as they say it is? So either through sheer curiosity or some other driving force, they found their way into Congo using the guide. They found their way to a base camp that was set up by the legitimate Congolese army. And what they found out was worse than they had imagined. At this camp, there were five young boys who had actually escaped from a rebel army. The boys were considered enemies of the state, so the legitimate Congolese army treated them harshly, would not give them any food, beat them. The two American men had to tread very lightly, but they were able to gain the trust of the boys. They began to give them food, clean clothing, soap, toothbrush, and the boys began to open up to them and told them horror stories about what they had to endure as child soldiers. But when they began to talk about stories of whistleblowers, 
One of the American men described his feeling as a horror that grew feet, stood up, and walked around with him. You see, the whistleblowers, again, were the little children who were too small to carry a gun. Their sole purpose was to carry these whistles and to make enough noise so that the enemy would be warned and would flee. Then they had to stand there and receive the first round of bullets with their bodies. If they ran, the rebel soldiers who put them up to this would shoot them down, babies. And as if that wasn't bad enough, the rebel soldiers would then pick up the bodies of these dying, bleeding children, use them as shields to advance in their attack. Why? Why? If you have your cell phones handy, pull them out, please. There is a substance in our cell phones that is used to make cell phones and it's also used in computers. This is a natural resource called Colton and it is mined all over the Congo. These rebel soldiers are fighting for control of this natural resource. They want to mine it and sell it. This war is about money. What to do? One of the Americans, Sean Carrasco, was so moved by the telling of the story of the whistleblowers, he figured, I have to do something. He began a campaign called Falling Whistles. Falling Whistles, in a nutshell, partners with various Congolese organizations to help these children who have managed to escape that horror of the wars. They help them through education, vocational training, through nutritional programs, through arts, through sports, anything that can put their lives back on the right track. What can we do? Visit the fallingwhistles.com website and become a whistleblower for peace. You can purchase a whistle. You can tell someone, just like I was told, and just like I'm telling you right now, not so long ago, there was an international outcry against what became known as blood diamonds. That outcry put a screeching halt to that practice. And if we can tell enough people about the substance in the cell phones, in computers, that is mined in the Congo, and its connection to these whistleblowers who are being murdered, we can stop 